रजीम बिस्मिल्लाम असलम वरम वह जी आया नू पखेरा गले निहाव चुन शुमे वशमले ओहाय गाइमस गुट मोगन ओला बोजोर पीबियत कई फाल हाल शुम चतोरे आहलन बसाल मरहबा बूना मूचो ग्रासिया स्वाबिया बल्ली करे आया Hoosh Galdin and thank you very much everybody for tuning into PTV World you're definitely watching World this morning alongside the very fantastic amazing and a very learned colleague which I'm blessed to have alhamdulillah she happens to be Ms Hajar Sati I happen to be Shahzad Hasan Khan it's an amazing friday morning and we hope and pray that everybody out there is ready to kick start their day with us Hello Hajra how are you doing today Assalamu alaikum thank you so much you know I'm always humbled by your introduction I am doing good You truly deserve it Thank you so much uh, So Shahzad you know yesterday we were talking about you know how we wish that there should be some sort of glasses that we could wear you know while sleeping on one particular side so you know we are always addicted you to the You found the solution No no, no. <laughs> I thought you had a solution no. as well So you know I think this is a very interesting story so you know me and Hajra we actually had a common problem and that was that we both actually like to read on our cell phones as well i right. mean she otherwise even reads quite a lot uh, better than me as well but what happened was i was like hey you know what you know i'm still looking for glasses where if i am on the other side of my pillow or this side of my pillow i think what i would certainly right. want is the glasses to stay on my eyes and that's not possible because i uh, i do wear these rimless glasses and i do not want to break them so she was like yaar you know this is the exactly same thing which i was thinking so right. did you actually Look for it. Do you no. think there is a solution for so it? So actually, my glasses have loosened a bit from the end <laughs> because you know I, I'm always sleeping on one side, but you know I can't help it. I I can't help my this habit of you know reading while sleeping. True, so and I, and you know it's not just with glasses, right. even with right. clothes. You know, so the clothes really adjust to your body right. type as right. well. You know, people who are, um, unfortunately if they are obese, you know their shalwar kameez and kurta will be on the broader uh, spectrum, and you know people who are thin and slimmer, you know they will get their kurta. in a very cut sort of a feel as well so you know this is how things are you know when you start to right. wear them they kind of adopt to you or it's not you adopting to them they adopt to you as well if you do not take them to that uh, uh, i think point where they're going to break and uh, kind of continue to serve you for whatever purpose you you have acquired it for but ladies and gentlemen since it happens to be a friday please make sure that you remember us our entire team right. you know maybe our cameramen maybe our producers maybe our entire team in the mcr you know please make sure that you pray for them because you never know you know you pray for them and inshallah when allah listens to you i think that's going to be wonderful as well but today you know i think it's a big day for pakistan a lot of pakistanis of have their eyes on television sets as well at right. 4 pm ladies and gentlemen the budget will it's come out and this is something right. which everybody's kind of right. waiting for as well right. so let's see the top story for today we're only doing one So to talk about the budget, Haja, why don't you go take the lead? Okay. So the government will present budget for the next fiscal year 2022 to 2023 in the parliament today, with special focus on fiscal consolidation to contain budget deficit. Minister of Finance Mifta Ismail will present the budget in the National Assembly, which will start at 4 p.m. The budget has been formulated while considering the existing challenges being faced by the economy at the domestic and international fronts. um so i think you know uh, pakistan's fiscal year starts at in, in the month of june and uh, especially considering the fact that it's super super hot outside um so we wish best of luck to the government and <laughs> exactly and in addition to that i just have a very humble request right. you know if there's anybody who's actually kind of listening to us from the government there is a gentleman you know every time what happens is that you know i've been working with uh, pakistan television alhamdulillah for the last 10 years and i've seen that in every budget almost there's a 10% increase in the salaries of the people right, who are permanently right. employed by any government sector as well but imagine what happens with the people who are on contract or who are daily wages right. they have never gotten <laughs> such an increase no matter what happens so please make sure that you know keeping in view the inflation how it's going how things are because just today imagine so i was coming towards work there was this right. gentleman in his car and he rolled down his window and he was like you know since i have a very broken car nobody wants to sit in it can you please chip in some amount for the fuel so that's how difficult it is getting for people so please make sure that you know across all forums that if yeah. you are increasing 10% it needs to be across all forums and across all groups as well so please make sure that you do that but other than that today uh, ladies and gentlemen we're actually going to talk about something really very important something very close to my heart and especially right. when we talk about a country where the maximum population is of youngsters too as well this is something which we really need to put our heads 
to and then make sure that we kind of find a solution. But before we do that, we actually really need to kind of share some statistics. Now imagine right. that when we talk about Pakistan, a total population of 220 million. The right. number one unfortunate incident is that we certainly do not have a lot of research going on. That's true. We do not That's have a lot of data collectors. That's and true. then obviously even with the census of the country's population, Right. We are really not on point, unfortunately. Right. Right. But inshallah, with the new York government, we hope that you know things are going to get better. So imagine today, ladies and gentlemen, we want to talk about drug abuse. And when we talk about drug abuse, uh, almost this is these are the facts and figures from 2012 to 2013, where seven million people are drug users, but out of them, two million people are drug abusers as well. And I think that this figure is very much on the Staggering, lower side. Right. Yes, yeah, statistically. And when we see around, I think we get to see that you know out right. of 10 people, almost two or three people are uh, abusing or at least using drugs as well. And we really need to control it. How do we control it? How do we make sure that people are going to get healthier and better since we are coming out of COVID and the world has been referred to as the Great Depression when we talk about 2020 as well. Depression itself, anxiety and all of these issues do lead you towards doing stuff uh, which, ladies and gentlemen, is not really healthier for you, for your family. Right. And unfortunately, I've seen families coming from here to hear just That's because of the fact they had to That's deal true. with one of their son or daughter. And That's while I true. speak about it, imagine that now the trend is increasing in females. In fact, men these days are kind of quitting to smoke as well. Right. And they say that the gateway to all of these drugs, ladies and gentlemen, so, is smoking uh, Shazad, as well. I'm sorry, I'm really like to add to this conversation. Sure. Uh, so when I was uh, doing my bachelor's in journalism, so we came across this, you know, marketing strategy by the, the, the smo big True. smoking corporates and they linked smoking with the women empowerment. And that's how they popularized this concept across the Europe that, you know, when you're smoking, it means you're very empowered. You, you're at par with the men and that is how they sell their product. Exactly. I don't know how it is. It is equivalent to the women empowerment in that sense because I do feel that you know you're destroying your lungs so without further any ado yeah I, I just need to add a little bit over here as well just before I introduce my guest even my producer wants us to introduce but I think right. this is important and that is that if you go back in time in 1990s we have seen movies where alcohol right. was glamorized now right. imagine that it is still glamorized right which is why I'm going right. to come down to right. now early 2000 ladies and gentlemen we have seen that you know smoking and alcohol and partying and all of that has been right. glamorized in film now imagine that you know in this time and day we have seen drugs being glamorized as well imagine that you know there are youngsters out there who think that Pablo Escobar is an ideal and imagine that you know if we are going to talk about an ideal who's a drug lord mm -hmm. or who's been a drug lord I think that we are still in a very serious problem That's we true. need to cater to it how yes. do we do that is something which we will be talking about we are very lucky that we've actually been joined with some perfect guests who are actually organizing and conference and that too within a university because hey you know what we're a country full of youngsters. So let's yes. see, let's ask, how do we avoid drugs and how do we make sure that we're going to live a healthier life as well? We're right. very lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody, ladies and gentlemen, who happens to be a drug treatment specialist. He is Dr. Nuru Zaman Rafiq Saab. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Wa alaikum salam and thank you very much for uh, inviting us on such an import, important topic. Thank you very much, thank sir, you. for joining us. Wonderful to have you. And alongside him, ladies and gentlemen, we're lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody who happens to be the head of psychology at NAMS, National University of Medical Sciences. And she is Professor Dr. Ms. Shazia Khalis Saiba. Hello, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Wa alaikum salam and good morning. And thank you, Shazad and Hajra, Jadad. for having me here. Jadad. Thank Jadad. you very much. It's a, it's a pleasure to actually have you both over here as well. Yeah. But first things first, sir, obviously, it's a very important topic. And before we get into, you know, how people get into drug addiction and all of that, let's just talk a, a, a little about the statistics. We're a country uh, where the youngsters population is somewhere around 55 to 60 percent of the total population. You know, we can be at a higher risk of making sure that, God forbid, we will not let our country progress just yeah. because of the fact that it's going to kind of disturb everybody on every facet and every forum. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, uh, first of all, when we talk about the statistics, unfortunately, the last uh, uh, drug survey, the National Drug Survey, was conducted in 2012 and 13. True. And uh, you have just mentioned the figures from there that it, it's around 7 million overall uh, population. But an alarming thing which we actually observed at that time, that is the prevalence of drug use was around 6%. Okay. And uh, keeping in view the 220 uh, million population at the moment, so the number must have gone, even if we keep the same prevalence rate into our mind, then the number must have gone more than uh, 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 1.2 million. And that's alarming again. Uh, 
coming down to you have talked about 2 million who are addicts and when you look around for the uh, treatment centers uh, which is uh, uh, I would not be calling them proper treatment centers, but still if we count all the beds across Pakistan it is less than 2000. Right. And you know about the treatment, when we talk about the treatment related with the uh, uh, these uh, um, s uh, people with substance use disorder, at least, at least they have to spend 90 days. Internationally now they have gone to 120 days, but still for 4 months that um, particular bed that is actually uh, going to be occupied by that person. So, accordingly we have got little or no facilities for the treatment, but even when we go for the treatment then we do not have uh, proper sort of trainings or the trained staff. Thank you for saying there. that. Thank you yeah. for saying that. Unfortunately, we are facing that and that is the reason we have, we have actually collaborated with the university for that, okay. that uh, we want that there should be evidence based practices as being taken up in other Southeast Asian countries, South Asian countries and in Europe, the same should be actually adapted for Pakistan. So, that right. uh, we should be having a proper treatment like it is around uh, 15 uh, uh, to or, uh, overall uh, period which is re required is more than 15 months. And sir, we will yeah. certainly talk about it. I know that you have right. a question, but I uh, want to move, uh, move on to Dr. Shazia Saiba over here. So now, what I have seen is, you know, when we go abroad, when we go to different countries, obviously every country has got this problem of drug addicts and abusers. Rather, what their health system does is that they make sure that they are going to give them minimal dose and that too within a very secure area with near syringes and whatsoever they can provide. So that he or she gets the dose and that they do not overdose number one that they do not have any other illness and that it does not transmit to any other person as well which means that partially they might have given up on the treatment aspect of it rather what they do is they make sure that okay uh, you know what if he's a drug abuser or a drug user himself or herself you know give them enough that they do not die and that they do not transmit diseases to anybody else if the developed countries have come to a point where they're not talking about rehabilitation they're talking about okay now let's manage it moderately why do you think that we are still talking about having rehabilitation centers and proper trainings when the countries have already given up on it? Okay. Uh, before I answer this sure. question, this is a very important question. I would just like to add to what Dr. Saab has just said. Sure. Uh, currently, there are the, you know, the critical aspect of this drug abuse thing in Pakistan is that around 40,000 cases are emerging every year now. 40,000 cases. And they are reported ones. They are the reported ones. Yes. Right? And they are reported by the parents or the drug abuser themselves? Uh, we are talking about anti narcotics force. All right. They a lot have of reported. unreported ones too, right? We are not talking about unreported, we are talking about yes. only 40, those cases. So, this means that we are among the list of those top countries in the world where we are facing this challenge at an enormous level you can say right, right? so coming back to your concern yes you are very right uh, the point is number one people have uh, different school of thoughts True. they believe that this is the model that can work for the improvement of this kind of behavior management of this behavior right. but what we seeing in america and in western culture and even in iran you would be amazed to know iran is also following the same strategy so uh, we are hoping that eventually we will come to that also and having said that it does not mean that they do not have rehabilitation centers. Okay. They have fully functioning rehabilitation centers and because it helps them to overcome this problem and as a sudden you can say empirical evidence suggests that relapse uh, rate among uh, drug abusers right. after rehabilitation is quite high. So, it is actually the second time when they go through this treatment that it, the treatment model becomes effective. So, it has to be a holistic approach. There have to be different ways through which yeah. we can solve And we will problem. certainly talk about it, but let us get into the very basics of it. You know, why do you think that people actually start using drugs? I mean, for right. some it might be fun, and for some they might be curious. Some for, for some, they might not have pressure. good company, some peer pressure, right. some parents are not around. So, you know, there is a long list of excuses. and. You know, when I come to think about it is that, you know, God forbid if somebody is going to tell me, I stress, but I, thoda sa mai kar hi leta hu. 
I think that you know they're weaker on the inside, right? So it has to do quite a lot with their right. nourishment and how they were brought up. Please go ahead. And yeah. what are the alternatives? You know, if if he said that there's a lot of stress, uh, so what are the other avenues through which we can release stress without falling into yeah. this? Actually, or if it's their excuses. Right. Yeah, actually, uh, you have uh, more or less answered the question yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but it is a very challenging question. It's the most important question as it is directly related with intervention and treatment, mm -hmm. right? So as you said that it can be, for instance, uh, sensation seeking behavior because of which youngsters do that. They want to have that excitement. They want to feel that they have to, they want to have that kind of high feeling as you say. And on the other hand, it can be unemployment also. Right. That it can be simply boredom, loneliness mm -hmm. yeah. for youngsters, mm -hmm. right? And then academic stress mm -hmm. is a very important contributory factor. Then we have, uh, you know, people want to become high achievers. That can also be, and then peer pressure. Usually it starts with, okay, peer. my friends are smoking a cigarette. I can do it once or twice. Yeah. And then the habit starts. So this is where the problem. So I can say that there is not a single formula on the basis of which you can categorize that this is the problem. Mm. And you can say that all of them have, have this, uh, you know, determinants for mm. this kind of behavior. Mm. But as a psychologist, what I feel is that deep down at the base of all these, you know, causes we are talking about, it is lack of emotional coping. Emotional coping. coping. Yeah. It's the deficit in our emotional coping. True. As you are saying that what should be d done then? Right. So uh, uh, somebody would say um, physical exercises, somebody would suggest that uh, you should have healthy company. Uh, we will talk about solutions, I believe. Uh, exactly, yes, we in, will in the in later detail. part of the so, program, yeah. but let me move on to Dr. Sam now. <laughs> yeah. huh. So Dr. Sam, I'm going to share a very interesting story and then you have to tell me, you know, what are the effects of drug abuse and that too on the totality of it. Okay? You know, all the family members, how they will be having that negative impact as well. So imagine that, you know, ever since we are growing up, we have been having that one glass of milk every single day, right? True. So, you know, my mother gives me that glass of milk, I'll drink it and that's it. And it is it has always been one glass of milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think with drugs, it's different. You know, you take whatever you're taking, one day you take one, the other day you take two and you take three. Yeah. Why in the first place that occurs? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that the consumption of uh, glass of milk does not go up and why the consumption of drugs go up? And number two, what are the impacts and effects of it on the family, on the gentleman or the lady themselves as well? Because I, the re recent stats tell that women are now more into drug abuse and drug use as well. Uh, well, so first of all, when you talk about the milk, definitely there is something which is uh, really hated by the adolescents when they go into the, that particular age. Reason being that they think that uh, we are not growing up properly maybe and that's, that's one thing. Coming down to the drugs, why it is actually increasing. Uh, initially, they start with, you, you can say just uh, 0 0.01 gram and then with the passage of time because they start using it like the stimulants are being used in the campuses for one purpose initially and that is just to get some sort of energies and uh, to wake up whole night for the paper and like that True. and uh, later on uh, the tolerance we call it the tolerance which is okay. actually uh, the scientific term for that and tolerance is developed with the passage of time and the dependence that is the second issue. So, with the passage of time, they, they have the uh, dose which they require to do a particular work. Uh, initially, it was 0.1 gram. Uh, then in the later stages, they cannot do the same work by taking 0.1 gram, so they increase it. True. So, with the passage of time, the tolerance increases okay. and that tolerance takes them to the uh, increasing the dose. Right. So, that is the second thing. So, what the people do that they actually start uh, using that specific thing for a specific uh, time and later on someone tells about another one and they start using that as well. Uh, you were just uh, mentioning another thing related with the European countries another thing. Uh, oral substitute therapy is there. True. Uh, right. and that oral substitute therapy like methadone or buprenorphine that is being used uh, uh, for ages in various countries even when we talk about pakistan if you remember uh, about 30 to 35 years before we used to have these a uh, ka theka right right opium the people who used to use the opium hmm. they go over there they take uh, that specific uh, pill for that purpose so that uh, they should survive 
and uh, that is something that oral substitute therapy was uh, being used over there. Pakistan is going to do one pilot for that as well in Pakistan, uh, uh, specifically in certain uh, um, hospitals which are being uh, actually governed by the government, administered by them and they are going to start this oral substitute therapy over here. Right. That is something which is required now. Yeah. Right. Uh, and sir, I am sorry, I am cutting you, Shahzad. I uh, didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry, back. Yeah, so, right. uh, so um, I also feel, you know, sometimes that, you know, our parents very, you know, jealously guard the conservative norms and they don't allow their children to, you know, be near to them and to discuss a lot of topics exactly. which are taboos, right? Exactly. Um, and I don't know how to improve that, but uh, talking about youth and I would like to talk about the universities and I do feel that they are becoming a hub of the, yeah. uh, you know, drug addiction. Dr. Sabah just talked about the, uh, you know, the, this particular thing that uh, there are many pros of life skill based education programs which are right, exactly. being initiated in various, uh, you know, the uh, private institutes they are taking it up. There yeah. used to be certain special chapters in our, uh, you know, uh, if you remember, uh, as far as what we were studying at our time. Right. There used to be special chapters related with the akhlaqiyat, coping skills and these things. Those used to be there. But uh, with the passage of time that uh, burden right, right. their bags are getting voluminous and like that. Right. So that is the reason many of the things which were actually removed. First of all, it was thought that it is all rubbish mm -hmm. and which was not. Mm. Those particular chapters that was something which has which should have been there and moreover as far as the uh, isolation mm -hmm. now we have observed that even when a mother has to call up uh, uh, her son or daughter for the dinner mm -hmm. she she is just calling her on, on the, the telephone phone. sitting in another room in yeah. the same house right. oh, but upstairs or downstairs, yeah, can or downstairs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's another we issue. have to convey a message yeah. we use our mobile <laughs> so that that is that is uh, why there is lot of isolations in the houses and uh, right. the, the parents don't get actually intermingled with their children right. and that is crazy. And, and I, have a, I have an amazing solution mm -hmm. for that too as well because this is something, this is a practice which we did follow in our household. So our father never allowed any one of us to actually have a TV set exactly. in our rooms. Room. So exactly. what he did was that he was like, hey, you know what, so the TV will be in the TV lounge. And everybody's supposed to come down for lunch, exactly. dinner, or whatever right. we're eating, so we have to do I it together. I think one meal of the day, you know, we should spend with the we entire family. At least one. one right? I think you're being really modest about it. I think if you get a chance, no, have all three with them. Because, yeah. you know, the <laughs> timings and, you know, the, our uh, mm. sort of, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the job timings are like that. that we can't have exactly. all three, but at least one. I think that's... When I was growing up, I remember that we used to spend our evenings in the lounge. Mm. Yeah. Right. Not sitting in our rooms. True. And we but would you be watching while at that time, did you? <laughs> that, that is true, actually, that That's is right. That. But the point is that we had this feeling we were integrated into the family. Right. Yeah. Nowadays, this is what is also the problem. Yeah. Generally, youngsters, youth, they do not feel that they're part of the family. Mm -hmm. Parents have don't have time for them. They have their own seasons to watch. They want them to go to their own rooms, right. use their own, you know, laptops right. and so, so on. But so, so very quickly, you know, uh, what I wanted to ask was that, you know, it's, it's a billion dollar industry or probably a trillion dollar industry right. when we right. talk about drugs and wherever there's money, you know, it will make its way just like the water do, uh, does as well. Mm -hmm. So imagine, now what I want is that, you know, us doctors, there are so many researchers and it's all about releasing endorphins probably in your brain. That's what it is most of the time. But what happens is that, you know, we do have that illicit way of doing that. Why don't we actually create a medicine or something where UNICEF spoke about the oral therapy as well, which is healthier for people and does the same job. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do that? I mean, yeah. I'm not asking for heaven over here, yeah. so, but still. Yeah. I, I was reading about a research uh, recently that they are going to implant an electrode in your amygdala. Okay. And by stimulating that, you would be getting similar kinds of feelings. So maybe <laughs> the in solution the is, is there. I don't but know. The there will be stigma is. around having that thing in your brain too as well. But the point is, why do you have to have this feeling I mean, all like the time? Looking, looking for a better you know, solution for people out there. Doctor <laughs> talked about, uh, you know, uh, tolerance in a uh, different manner. But we need to have this kind of attitude also True. in us. We need right. to, you, say, yes. uh, you see, when you talk about parents and you were talking about solution, I think the first thing uh, parents need to teach their children is how to say no, no to their peers. True. 
frustration is one of the big reason why a lot of people go towards this drug addiction and they said that they hired a teacher you know who was teaching those kids that you know uh, so, so it, uh, she gave a very interesting example you know by using puppets and stuff like that and she said if there is a lot of rush on the road you don't say hey goofy uh, make the way for me you don't have to say the goofy and the kids were laughing so you know they had these programs which were implemented at the secondary level or the primary level in the schools you know which they are teaching that you know uh, there are other ways to cope up with the frustration um, and and also lastly i would like to ask you what are the early signs you know uh, which you want to identify that if your child is going towards this and treatments with that okay yes. all right so uh, this question that you have asked or maybe it's an observation you can say mm -hmm. it has a you uh, kind of a multifaceted uh, right. uh, components mm -hmm. attached to them the thing is frustrations are always going to be there it's not possible uh, why is it so that in the single family one individual is taking drugs and others are not and this is the case usually mm -hmm. so they are as much frustrated as the other sibling is right, right, right. so as you said the answer to it is in prevention hmm. and this is what this conference is about okay. prevention okay. we have to work on how to uh, use those strategies formulate indigenous strategies that can be used in order to you know uh, make sure that this behavior does not emerge in our children so yes that is a good idea mm -hmm. and then another thing is health education right health education is also very important we need to understand that our health we, we should become health conscious people True. at large so these uh, i believe that these are the solutions and as i told earlier emotional coping Right. Yeah, that that's that's the important. most important as well. But thank you, Arma Doctor Saheb, for being with us. Thank you, Arma Doctor Saheb, for being with us. Lovely to be in conversation right. with you. And ladies and gentlemen, what Doctor Saheb or Doctor Saheb over here said, I go, I'm going to agree to it 100 percent. And I've seen my father, a very hardworking gentleman, who's always made sure that you know he's not going to cry in front of their kids. You know what. Ever the problem may probably be, mm -hmm. I've never seen him on the weaker side. In fact, it gave us the confidence. It gave us that emotional confidence as well that hey, everything's going to be fine. We really need to have faith in Allah Almighty as well. That's true. You know, things can go wrong when you start from excitement or curiosity, and then you unfortunately develop that tolerance. Unfortunately, it can be a problem for your family members as well. I've seen families coming from here till here in terms of wealth, health, everything, every aspect of it. And it's just because of the fact that they kept on brushing the very bad habit of their kids under the carpet, and unfortunately, they kept on doing it for their kids just so you know that they could relax or do whatever they could, wanted to. So please make sure, where well, Ma'am said that it's an holistic approach. I think the parents, the family members, you know, puppo ke bache, khalon ke bache, everybody needs to come together to save that one life from that drug abuse, which is an ill menace. And please make sure that even if you have somebody around you. Make sure that you contribute the way you can. Right, that was very amazing. You know, sort of uh, the the message that uh, Shahzad said. And uh, so now we are going on a break. And when we come back, we'll discuss what are the you know other avenues that we could utilize. You know, so that we could uh, be away from this malice and uh, menace that Shahzad already pointed out. Wonderful. We're heading out towards a short break. Don't go anywhere. Good morning. Watch our show. You'll be good.